Westbrook was. Uh, the announcers <laughs> told me he was exhausted from those 40 minutes of basketball. You buy 40 that? 40 excruciating, heavy laden, is that what they yeah. say? Allen Iverson played 46. And by the way, in an era where you could knock him yep, down. Yep. Yeah, I, I think the fatigue factor has been overblown. Was he a little tired? He, he certainly looked at, like it. He didn't have legs in his jump shot. But I think it was a combination of, okay, is he, he maybe he's a little fatigued. But more so the mental anguish. Thank you. That you knew this was over. Right? Thank you. It's over. And there's some frustration because every time he went out, the lead just fell apart. You know, right. I mean, they – they were outscored by 56 points, 58 points when he wasn't in the game this series. It's very similar, and by so the way. And so I think he felt frustrated. Very similar to LeBron. You know, when he, even when he was in Miami yep. with Wade and Bosch and Battier, when LeBron wasn't on the floor, here's what you did in Miami. You held your breath for four and a half minutes so they could hold that four-point lead. And th this is the thing. My, LeBron went through that for seven years in Cleveland. Okay, four after, you know, they got good when he was there. This is Westbrook's first year. What happens is Westbrook, after he goes through this, maybe one time will be enough for him because he's used to competing for championships, or maybe he'll have to go through it again. But at some point, he'll begin to feel like, I want some help. Like, I, I need some other top-ranked players to come play with me. That's why LeBron did what he did when he went to Miami. He recognized the value of needing other great players. Westbrook had, you know, he was spoiled. He played with KD his whole career. Now he's starting to see, okay, you need other great players to of win. Of course. It might take another year before he re so recognizes So we're going to give him a break that if it takes him another year to figure out what everybody else in the world can, we're going to give him a break because, you know, he needs no, another a, a year. a lot of players go through this. A lot of, when players first get in the league, don't they don't care about winning? He's and a, I don't blame him because they, they just want to get paid. No, but he he's been used to competing at such a high level. He hasn't known struggle for the most part. He's had Kevin Durant with him. They've gotten they got to the finals earlier in his career. Then they were injured a lot. But you know, he's used to going to the second, third round of the playoffs. Right. And so this year he probably did in some ways feel free. I get to do my thing. Right? And he did his thing. He averaged a triple-double. He's going to win the MVP award. Rightly, I might add. And he, now he, he's going out in the first round. So I think he's going to start to feel like, you know what? The team success is better than anything I do individually. Okay, this, I know the Clippers aren't popular nationally. I could argue sometimes they, for years they weren't popular locally. But Chris Paul's now winning this series. Utah's a fascinating. So you got Utah winning it for sure. Well, listen, I think Utah's the most likable team left. They got all these, they're the redeemed team. Quinn Snyder was sent to Russia. <laughs> Joe Johnson was sent to Brooklyn. Joe Engels was dropped by Doc Rivers. I got Boris Diaw, a 27th pick in the first round, Rudy Gobert. It is cast saw. It, it's like, I mean, you look at this team, there's a lot of guys that people have bailed on, including the head coach. And they're going to beat the Clippers. They're the, they're the lowest payroll in the league. The Clippers are the third or second highest in the league. And Utah's going to win this thing. And my takeaway is, okay, fine. I love Harden. I don't love Westbrook. But what I love every year is Chris Paul. you seen Chris Paul's numbers, his efficiency, 4-1? to one. Awesome. Okay, Chris Paul's going to take the hit for this garbage. No. But there is a strike against him that what? he can't get past the second round. And don't tell me he hasn't had talent. I love Chris Paul. He is an all-time oh, great point guard. Is this one of these I love LeBron no, arguments? No, I mean, again, I bring objective objectivity <laughs> to the set. Right? <laughs> I'm not either, or you know. And so Chris Paul has been great, but the fact that he has not been able to get past the second round in his career is going to be a strike against him. And okay. rightly so. I mean, he's had talent. You, oh. you got Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan. Oh. You got Doc Rivers, who's been, you know, uh, people have always felt he's one of the best coaches in the league. Oh, time out. So he's J.J. Got... Redick is a great oh. shooter. Oh, Jamal God. Crawford, a top six oh. man. Why can't you get to the second, past the second round? Until last night, J.J. Redick was Bermuda Triangle in this series. Crawford stinks. The other young guy. Crawford I, stinks? Crawford in this series is shooting like 22% from three. Blake Griffin can't hit a jumper if it's, it's further away than me to the microphone. Chris should not get blamed for this series. But I'm just saying, He's when you tremendous. look at his career, 
and you see he has not been past the second round, that's going to be a, a hit against him. That's all I'm saying. That's unfair. There's he's a different. He's all like an old school point guard. Yeah, he demanding. In this new, he doesn't impact the game. As like Steph Curry does. I'm sorry. Well, I will or, acknowledge. Or, or like Russell Westbrook does. Oh, boy. Or to, like James Harden does. Oh, boy. So tomorrow, <laughs> you're a GM tomorrow in this league. Chris Paul Westbrook, who are you taking to build around? <sighs> Westbrook has been past the second round. Westbrook has been to the finals. God. I like Chris Paul better. I would yeah. rather be play with Chris Paul. But that's a tough one. I, that's a good question. You always come up. I would take Harden over both of them. I like Harden. To start, if I had to start a team with one of those three, I, I'd I probably like take Harden. Harden. You know, you always come on this show. You ever notice this, John, with Broussard? He comes on the show and he dogs the guy and he goes, but I'm really a fan of his now, work. I, I, why does, like, when, when I just say he's not the greatest player ever, I'm dogging somebody. It's like me saying, you know, I love Picasso, and then I use his paintings as a doormat walking into my house. <laughs> okay. How have I dogged LeBron? <laughs> I just said he wasn't MVP this year. That's the only negative, I ain't even, that's negative. That's the only thing I've said against LeBron. I said he's the best player in the world, second best ever to Jordan. Okay. I, I'll, all I'm going to say this. Chris but not Paul, the MVP. Chris Paul probably it was, doesn't know. I, I think he knows who I am. He's probably never watched this show. But I'd like to look right in the camera. Can we do a solo shot on me? Two people on this set are telling you they like you. <laughs> One likes you. All right, let's segue. Okay, so. You now, were soft on me, too, on the Westbrook thing. I'm I'm. I'm surprised. No, I was I, expecting darts and bullets. No, listen. From you. Here's the way I looked at it. It's a math equation. I said this yesterday, Chris, is that Oklahoma City built a team, big, tall, long. Then Durant left it hurt. Now they're left with a bad math equation. The league in 3 years has changed. That's why LeBron keeps saying, "Get me Corver, get me JR, get me it's become a three-ball revolution, and Oklahoma City's just not built. I didn't think they – I thought they would get – I admit, I thought it would go six, but after the second game, I'm like, Oklahoma City has no chance. It's just the math doesn't work. Now, let me ask you – see, I think the way they need to build, reshape the team around Westbrook is the same way Houston's done it. Put shooters around him, and I would go out and get like a Mike D'Antoni assistant and bring him to Oklahoma City and run D'Antoni's offense. That's if you open the floor like that for Westbrook, like you did for Harden, I think uh, great things would ensue. Is Doc Rivers safe? Couple quick questions. Is Doc safe? The injuries always seem to help Doc. You know, Blake's out this year, but I don't think it's an excuse, a legitimate excuse this year because they were without Gobert for the first three games. Gordon Hayward had food poisoning. You know, wasn't able to play all the time. It's a, Steve Ballmer's an impatient billionaire. Look. I like I'm saying, I like Doc. <laughs> I picked the Clippers to get to the finals in Doc's first year there. I thought he was just what the doctor ordered, no pun intended, for this team. But look, no matter how much you like Doc, can you you can't say he's gotten it done. They owe him 22 million bucks. You think Ballmer would swallow it? Yeah, he's got the money to swallow it. And I think it would depend if I'm Ballmer, whether or not I get rid of Doc depends on what I do with my players. If I bring in Carmelo Anthony to play no. with the big three, I keep Doc because I want him to mold it together. Otherwise, I may be looking to move on from Doc. If I bring back, like, this team as it is, don't add a mellow or anything, just tweak, I'm probably looking to move on. What, what's going to change? They need a system that, and I don't know what it is. I'm not saying I'm smarter than Doc Rivers, but I know that they are not maximizing their talent, and they haven't for the – Three, past three or four years. Do you talk to LeBron regularly? No, not regularly. What are the chances of you, because I have to defend him against the world, you know, <laughs> you could go a long way in our relationship if you could get LeBron on the couch. He's got nothing to do for seven days. He does have a lot of time. <laughs> What's in it for me? I, now, I can't get him on the couch. You know people that can get him on the couch. Very few. I'm an isolated <laughs> voice. But the key, key people, you know. I know one of his friends. <laughs> he's got LeBron. LeBron, you got nothing but time Well, you off. know he's doing the zero dark 30. Oh, you're zero right. Zero dark 323, yeah. 30, whatever it is. Yeah. Good seeing you, He's bud. balling, though. I'm giving him a shot. Not, I'm picking Golden State still, but I'm giving him a shot. Let me tell you something. A good shot. They don't. They've got the only team in this league. There's two teams that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe Golden State shooting on a good night. Houston and Cleveland. Outside yeah. of that, forget it. 
Those two teams, if they get hot, you can hang with Golden State. Don't think they'll beat them, but they can hang with them. It's all about math now. There's three teams that can win this thing. Golden State, I'd say Houston. Really? Well, it's Houston? Just, it's, that's the math. That's the way the world works now. More so than Harden San Antonio. So you think Houston's beating San Antonio in yeah, the next Harden didn't even wow. Harden didn't even play well. I think Houston's a watch out. I Harden, wouldn't mind seeing it them beat go San Antonio, that, although I, I'm really pulling for Memphis. Why don't you stop pulling for people? Because <laughs> you're pulling for the wrong oh, people. Oh, like you're not pulling for anybody. You're, uh, you're not hey, pulling for anybody. Chris, Paul, one guy's objective. Two are claiming their objective. <laughs> All right, back in a second. The